Hello everyone and welcome to part two of the medical doctor, preparing to be a medical doctor in America. Um, so if this is the first video you're watching, this is actually the second part of this two part series. So go watch the first part and then come back to this one. I'll link it somewhere in this box. Um, so in the first episode we talked about, well we talked to these beautiful people. Um, they shared their journey about coming to America so far to be a medical doctor. And on this episode we're going to focus on now that they're in America as doctors. What has the experience been like? So um, let's jump right into it. Um, so what has your experience been like so far in America? Any culture shock? Highs, low? I'll start, start with okay. Adora. <laughs> mm, that's a really good question. I don't know if there was much of a culture shock for me because I went to undergrad in Canada, so I kind of already knew what the culture was. Um, but definitely going from Ireland to um, here was like in terms of the work, like the pace of life was definitely a culture shock to me because Irish people are super laid back, like mm -hmm. super relaxed. There's like, you know, everyone's like chilled. Like if you don't know something, it's fine. Go and read up on it. Like wasn't like, you know, there wasn't like this cut, not, not that it's cut through where we're working at right now, but I feel like it was a lot more chilled and relaxed and not a lot was, I guess, expected of me as a medical student. So then that transition as being a resident was a little more like, then I was like, wow, like I have to work six, <laughs> six days a week. I get one day off. My brother was like, because my brother went to med school here, was like, yeah, that's normal. I was like, I'm only used to working five days a week. <laughs> and that's if I show up, like, you know, like it didn't matter, like whatever. How many hours? For how many hours here? Five. Yeah. Like, sometimes I only stay for rounds and, well, we fell. <laughs> so maybe three maybe hours. <laughs> Depends on the rotation. Like it wasn't like super, like you had to do this, you had to do that. Like they wanted you to do the rotations, but I guess it was more of whatever you put into it is what you got out. Mm -hmm. And I was studying for the boards. So unlike my Irish counterparts, I didn't have the luxury to stay 12 hours in the hospital. Like I was like, okay, we're here for rounds. I'll talk to the resident. Can I leave? They're like, yeah. And I'll literally just go to the library and study for my step two. That's like, it's not like I'll go home and be sleeping and be living my best life. Like I was like, I just have to maximize the amount of time that I have. And unfortunately I had to like split my time between two different things. So like if it did require me to be in the hospital, I wasn't there. I would be at home studying. So then that transition into like being in the hospital and then being expected to still study for your step. Cause we have three steps, remember. One of them is usually taken at, while you're in residency. So being expected to work for 12 hours in a day, six days a week, and then still go and write your exam and pass it. And it was a lot, it's like, it's not easy. But I guess that was the main culture shock. Other than that, in terms of like the cultural, like how people behave and stuff like that, it was always something I was used to coming here. Cause I grew up in like, I went to Canada. I did my, like some masters in public health here in America. So I really understood the culture of the people and everything like that. And I went to a school in Ireland and I don't think, except for them being laid back, I don't think I was lacking in the westernized culture, I guess. Any you like it? For me, well, maybe because I came directly from Nigeria, it's quite slow, so not much of a culture shock. Maybe if I went to a bigger city, maybe. It's very easy to. Where do you live in Nigeria? Lagos. Oh. Born and bred in Lagos. So oh. I'm actually used. I'm used to fast slow for me. Mm. So really, not much. Not much. Um. About life in general. Yeah. Keeping time. That I'm still getting really good at mm -hmm. um, because in Uganda, time is a suggestion. <laughs> you know, you need to <laughs> um, So, the only other thing is that you're doing a lot of making sure you're not getting sued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Making sure that if you're called to court, you have all your documentation. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a very doctor. Easy, yeah. Yeah. Very so, easy, it's, so, as much as you're, you're learning and you're helping patients and everything, you're also constantly trying to make sure the legal team is not calling you the next day. So that's kind of been, it's a bit frustrating because all you want to do is help mm -hmm. and then you're kind of having to always think about that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Have you had occasions where the legal team has actually called you? And you know, anybody? Be, yeah, what, or what would be like a reason? Would it be like advice given to a patient or? I mean, not necessarily, but like I've had, I've, you know, experienced where patients, um, have something happen. Not something like that's no one's fault, but something happens or a patient is unsatisfied and then you have to document every conversation you had with the patient. Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything wrong. The patient is just maybe not happy. And that's okay. People are not happy. But now you, the legal team is stressed 
And so you have to think about documenting. You have a telephone call with someone, you need to document it. You can't just say, oh yeah, I spoke to them. It's like, no, they, it's not written, it's no evidence. Mm -hmm. So it's just things like that. That's kind of like, I just want to have, I just want to work and help mm -hmm. people. Okay. Yeah, so I was going to just piggyback off what Marion said. Yeah, but I don't think as residents we literally, like, necessarily go into court and stuff. It's more of the attending. But there, it's preparing us for mm -hmm. when we do become attendings. America, you document everything. And any interaction you have with the patient, you document. Any interaction you have with staff, you document. Anything you do, you document. Like, everything's literally, like, if I talk to a patient and that interaction was like, mm, or I, maybe a patient was doing something that's against medical advice, I document it in my notes. I'm like, I told patient this, patient's mom did this, da 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 da, da and this is what happened. Like, you're always, I don't know, I feel like you're almost covering yourself. Always. You know, always. So many bases. Yeah. It's good, I guess, but like, it's something I'm not used to as well, just documenting everything. I wonder why, that's why some doctors, like, now when I go into my doctor, they're kind of like standoffish. It's like, they don't want to, they're not as friendly as like in Nigeria, where you, like, they take you as, this is my child type of thing. But well, here it's like, just keep your child to yourself, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. So, um, next question, how are you, for you, like, how are you funding your education and then for both of you, can you give us like an idea of what a typical resident makes and um, so someone that's coming in and trying to get matched, what can they prepare for, do they need to have this amount of savings, just that kind of information. So, um, make it. Well, for me, first, first year, basically, self-funded, okay. family, myself. Uh, but for next session, I have funding already, so okay. next session is pretty much taken care of. But, but for this semester, for this semester, last semester, I had to pay the fees. Can you give us a range of like how much you have to pay? Uh, if you're comfortable sharing that. Okay. Uh, so between, I'd say between sixteen and twenty-five thousand dollars. Out of pocket. Is that yes, out of pocket. Accommodation, living expenses. Yeah. Or just uh, like, I, no, that's tuition. just that's just too short. First semester for here. No, for the whole year. For the whole year. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Correct. The I-20, the school will tell you you need $35,000 for the whole year. But for if the you entire give, program? For, no, for the, for the for first, the first year, year. Yeah, 35000 But if you give off campus okay. and all, you can put up some costs. Mm -hmm. um, I think for someone coming in, uh, for all the exams and stuff, 10000 would be nice to have in your back pocket. If you're going to spend 5000 on the first three exams, just the exams, I think $10,000 would be nice to have. Where that's going to come from, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then in terms of what residents make across the U.S., I want to say maybe between 48 to like 60. Depending on your location. Depending on your location. So like 48000 to like $60,000, like maybe in New York. But then you're paying 1200 for a two-bedroom. No, mm -hmm. it's not. And that's taxed. That's yeah, always yeah. fun. Um, so that's what I think, yeah. It's about what you think. Yeah. I think it's enough to like pay your bills and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like you have to be like super frugal, like I already have like oh we we save money already, like you have to think you have to tie the years <laughs> ahead, like you have to be if you want to make it to this life, man, you have to think so like we already budget <laughs> everything. You want that money to last too, you, you budget. Yeah. Like that's it. Like you think about your expenses, where you're gonna live. How much you guys are going to spend per month on groceries? How much are like, and it's also important if your residency program gives free food, then that cuts down uh, on how much like for groceries you spend. Because sometimes like you might just eat at work, and when you get home you don't have to eat, it's depending on your work schedule and stuff uh -huh. like that. So that actually really really helps in terms of how many meals you have per day and how mm -hmm. many you have left. So those are things you think about, but it's enough to pay your bills and it's enough to like do some nice things once in a while. But it's literally it's a stipend. It's not a salary. So it's not something like you're not. Going to be making big bucks and flying all over the world and stuff, especially if you also have a family, like it's harder. I know residents are in the same, it yeah. doesn't matter what rotation you're doing as a resident, you're all getting yeah, it doesn't matter if you're in plastic surgery, dermatology, we're all getting paid, so it's a stipend. I mean, mm -hmm. later on, you might make more, but at that you know, at the beginning, and yeah, different programs, free food, some programs will give you relocation fees. Yeah, when you interview, it's nice to ask how much are they paying in their rent because there yeah. are places where. Um, they earn way less money in other places, but rent was more expensive there. And that's what yeah. said, maybe, you know? These are questions you should definitely ask. And also, yeah, like what you said, rent. If they give you money for write your exams, 
education yes. fund because like some it. programs expect you to pay for these ex like step three and your boards they pay, expect you to pay for it out of pocket um, so you're now getting like what a thousand four hundred five hundred by weekly and then you have to pay eight hundred dollars for an exam with and then you have to pay rent with like you know so you have to like Thank you you have to be asking all these questions when you're going for interviews because it really goes a long way. So what advice do you give to prospective uh, international students looking to um, become doctors here? Um, I would say don't feel sorry for yourself because I'm like, oh, I'm a foreign graduate, it's going to be so hard. It's like, no, study for exams, plan 10 years ahead. <laughs> you need to plan, I think, just like be focused on what you want, work for it and just plan. Um, I had people who told me like, oh, you don't have connections in the U.S., you're never going to match. So, mm -hmm. no. Just put your best foot forward and just do your best, mm -hmm. I think. I feel like the U.S. really rewards you. If you get a good score, honestly, the sky's your limit. If you have a good score, apply whatever residence you want. They'll literally be begging you to come. Like, all you need is, it doesn't matter if you went to school in, like, some country that you think is backwards or something. Like, wherever you go to school, as long as you have, uh, the thing about America is as long as you have a good score, and as long as you have their letters and everything that they want, they will give you an interview. And then it's left for you as a person to then impress them, for them to want you. Mm -hmm. So it's if you have those scores, it, that's the only rate limiting factor as an IMG. So if you have those scores, don't listen to the USMGs. They can get low scores and then be getting competitive residencies. That's not you. If you have a good score, then the sky is your limit. You can apply to whatever the heck you want to and you will get it. But don't be to like if, if you're because the score you get is the score you get yeah you know so if it's not the score you're hoping for but you can work with your score yeah you know build upon it apply to places look at the places you're applying to look mm -hmm. on Frida and make sure that they will take you yeah they'll consider you know? your application yeah that's why I did Frida because my scores were like very mediocre very but that's why I she matched into a great program yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you're coming from Nigeria start early Start early, 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 and start early. One for only 10 years. Yeah, I start early, I save money. Yeah, yeah. It's something you have to plan. It's not something you wake up and then just start doing because everybody else is going to America. But if you if you can do it, and take, it yeah. And take people's advice with a grain of salt. Yeah, because yeah. it happened to someone doesn't mean like, if someone didn't match because they got a 260 and they did all this stuff and well maybe they have a horrible personality <laughs> nobody liked them during the interview maybe they got there and you couldn't converse that's actually another thing that i like that i went to school abroad because i have things to talk about like when i when i tell people i went to school in ireland they're like intrigued they want to talk that's literally all i talked about during my interview yeah. it just so happened that the person i was interviewing with also had been to ireland and that was it the 20 minutes i spent there we're talking yes. about ireland but some American graduates, what would you talk about? Okay. But like, you should have things to talk about. You have like life experiences. So be proud of the life experiences that you have. You know what I'm saying? So if you've had like you've practiced before, you can talk about that. If you've practiced in like low resource countries, that's great. They love to hear those stories. That's the thing. They love to hear. They want to know your perspective and everything like that. So I feel like being an IMG, like some people think it's a disadvantage, but I think you're an advantage because you bring another perspective mm -hmm. to the practice of medicine. So if there's anything that you guys could do differently in your journey so far, what would you do? I don't know. I would have probably taken the USMLE a little more seriously. <laughs> I didn't know that, like, I knew it was an exam I had to take to pass. And I knew my score was important, but I don't think I was. I was just going with the flow. Everyone in my class was writing step one at this time. So I wrote it at that time. Everyone in my class was writing step two at this time. So I wrote it at that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I, I wish, like, there's some of my classmates, I feel like they had more information than I did that literally they kind of let go of school and just focused on the boards. Like mm -hmm. they would go hard and they just, they knew the trick, which was just doing questions or do questions every single day. But then me, I was like, oh, like, do I focus on questions? Do I focus on school? Like I was torn between the two. So I would say that I probably would have focused more on like studying for the step. I don't think, so it was the grace of God, honestly, when I, that I passed. Yeah. So I, w I think I would have probably put more, um, effort into it and planning because I also had to push my exam back because I wasn't ready because mm -hmm. everyone was taking it in June so I scheduled for June came June wasn't ready so I pushed it to December and that also delayed how I took the other exams mm -hmm. too so that's why it's all about planning and doing it when you're ready to mm -hmm. do it how about you what would you do differently what I would do differently maybe I would I would speak with people more I'm 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 the kind of I like to believe that I'm independent, I like to do stuff myself. Mm -hmm. So 
most of the most of the process, I was trying to walk through it myself. But I think I would speak to people more. People that are here, they have a different perspective. There's a way they can make these things come alive to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it just seems abstract when you read it on the website. Mm -hmm. But when you, you know you meet someone who tells you, this is my story, this is how I went through, this is how important it was for me to get this or for me to do this. I think you'd be more motivated. So mm -hmm. for me, that's what I would do to friends. Like talk to more people that talk are, to more people that, that are, are residents. Yes, there are several people that have passed through this path we are attempting to pass through. Mm -hmm. I know several people that came from Nigeria, they are here, some came directly, some came to do MPH and at the side they did their steps and they matched already. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll speak to these people more. That's what I've done. How about you? Um, I would have just started earlier as well. From my first uh, year, I did my exam in my third year, so I'd have started studying and not even doing the exam that early, but just like studying and preparing mm -hmm. from them. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, any final thoughts for a roundup? I think 10 years ahead. <laughs> no, it's not a game. Like, coming to the US, it's not a game. Like, you're not doing it because, like, woke up one morning. Like, literally, you have, this has to be something you want. Because it takes a lot of, like, financial investments, emotional. Like, you have to have a good support system. Like, my husband can attest to the fact that there are many times I'll call up crying. I just like, I can't do this anymore. My parents, how many times did I tell them I wanted to quit? I didn't want to do it anymore. I told them I like, leave medicine, I'll come back to Nigeria, like I'll do, like, I don't want to practice anymore. Like you have to have like a good support system, financially, emotionally, like everything. You have to be like strong and you have to know that this is not going to be easy. Like some people, it's easy. They, everything happens to them and they match immediately and they get 10,000 interviews and everything. But just know that it's not going to be easy. So I also plan ahead. I would say don't give up. Just keep. You've made your decision, you planned ahead, just keep going. Even you have the hard days, the good days, just keep going. Just focus on the goal, and just keep going. Mm -hmm. Alright, okay. all day. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys for sharing. I think we've this has been a very, 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 very insightful conversation. Okay. Even for me, who's not in the medical field, yeah. it's very eye opening. So I hope you guys who are watching have found this very, very very informative, very helpful, very inspiring in some of the lessons that they've shared. Um, you guys have the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, and if you if you are interested in anything we've talked about today, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us. Our email address is coming to the usa.gmo.com and we'll put it in the box below. And then also follow us on social media as well at Nigeria to America. If you need Adora spare sheets or okay. any information from anybody here who <laughs> talks yeah. to us, we can probably like help you out as well. And thank you so much. If you made it to the end of part two, you're a star. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye.